Hello everyone, it's Free Name on YouTube and I'm going to take this to pieces so you don't have to. Uh, I've started it because there's no way I can do this on camera whilst also keeping everything in frame. So on the underside there are two Torx 9 or T9 screws that are there which loosens up this bottom bit. Then as a minimum, and I'm still now in the process of undoing them, there is a lug there, a plastic tab. Let me see whether I can brighten this image up a bit. Hopefully that's better. There's a uh, tab there. There's also a tab up here which I've undone and the same on the other side. There is a, well there we go, a tab there and a tab there. So that means you can then hinge the thing open. Presumably there's two more tabs at the top here. I've managed to find one of the lugs, put that in and then moved it moved the cover away so I know that one of those is now undone I need to move along do the next one there it is that's two of them undone so there's four of them I think along the top of this which are particularly difficult to undo and one more I believe Wow. There we go. So it's getting the spudger under there and then hinging it so it pushes the front cover forward. That is more difficult than I was expecting. So you've got the on the front cover you have the screw points, then the two catchers at uh, either side, and then the four catchers along the top. In the middle, you've got the light guide, which stops light bleeding to places that it shouldn't do, for the LED, which will be in the middle of the hub. Not a lot to see on this side, We've got some aerial or oh, antennas. Well, I'm not even sure that they are antennas. They look um, potentially like they're just taking radio from one part of the board to the other, possibly. And then we've got some interesting uh, security Torx bits here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those. That's the LED which goes into the uh, the front panel there, but I'm quite astonished with um, the use of security Torx bits. I was going to see how bright that LED is while uh, we've got the case off. Wow, hey, that's dazzlingly bright. By the time it goes through the light guide to go around the BT logo, it's uh, it's really dim. That's a lot of energy to be putting into a light to then not use that energy on the front of the device. Like I, I can see a uh, persistent image of that LED in my vision after looking away. And you can kind of see on the camera that here it's uh, causing like a corona type effect. That's uh, bright LED and I, uh, so this will go blue when it's connected correctly and blue LEDs are pretty good at burning out so if they're running the LEDs at a high power I wouldn't be surprised that in three years or so with these hubs the blue LEDs become much dimmer or uh, entirely invisible um, which used to happen to a lot of the Unify or Ubiquiti Wi-Fi points in their original design as well. Yeah, very bright multicolour LED. So we might have a problem here, which is I don't think I've got a security Torx 9 
However, it looks like the pip for the security is recessed actually so much that it doesn't matter. So there's def that is definitely a security bit. I can still get my screwdriver far enough into the screw head for it to actually engage. There's one screw that I'm unable to undo, so I'll have to uh, revisit that later. I've located the correct tool, actually with a security bit in it, which will mean that undoing this is going to be a whole lot easier. So when I undid one of the screws, uh, this one up here, it did feel like a heat sink or something has come away on the other side. There's something not quite right about whatever might be on the other side of that. So there's two clips, one clip where my left hand is and one clip where my right thumb is. Something's definitely dropped down behind. Yeah, there's a, uh, ah, in fact, what I have undone is in, is the entire heatsink plate. So actually, you didn't need to undo any of those screws. It's the heatsink plate. However, that will allow us to get access to more of the innards of this device. Let's move the clamshell out of the way. This is what the back of the heatsink looks like and the front of it. We've got three thermal pads, one there, one there, and the final one over here. The things that we can see immediately are, yeah, so these uh, blue things are taking radio from one side of the board, I think, to the other. So it's taking, say, this blue one over here, ends here, goes onto the connector on this side, takes the radio over to the left side of the board and goes onto this PCB antenna there. And the green one looks like it's the opposite. It starts somewhere over underneath this can or maybe, yeah, around here, and then goes over to uh, around about here, probably this antenna there. Got the WPS button on the side, and two capacitors. I think those are transformers for the Ethernet, and then probably one for the WAN Ethernet there. That must be stuff to do with the VoIP ATA port there, and that's about all I can show you. I can possibly attempt to get these cans off of here but when they're clipped down like they are with so many uh, contact points you end up bending the can. Also it looks like there might be a thermal pad underneath there making contact between the can and the chip that's below it and possibly the same for these bits here. So I'm not keen to take those off I'm afraid. So you'll have to do or deal with uh, what you can see there. But you do not need to undo, so if you are taking uh, one of these to pieces, you do not need to undo this one, this one, or this one. So that translates on the other side. Let me put that back on. To this one, this one, and that one. Those do not need to be undone because all they do is take off the heatsink on the other side. You can still take the circuit board out as long as uh, you undo the remaining ones. I 
Ah, there are also, because some go into plastic and some go into metal, there are actually two different types of screw. So the one with the very thin thread needs to go in where the heatsink is. That's the heat spreader or heat sink put back on and yeah three more screws would hold it onto the plastic casing. So there we go, that is what is inside this BT business or smart BT business smart hub three. As much as I can show you at least. Hopefully that's been interesting to somebody. If it has, it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel. You don't need to have the video notifications switched on, but the subscriber numbers really do help. And now let's put it back together. Oh no. And there we are. Let's plug it in, make sure it still switches on. Looks good. And it seems to be going through the boot process. It did the little uh, mauve flash on the uh, LED at the front. definitely booting up. Thanks for watching.